For me, the biggest roadblock has been understanding what the emotion is. There's mm. so much of the processing where I have to intellectualize it before I feel like it's something that I'm allowing into my body to feel, which is mm. really weird, you know, rather than intellectualizing that, rather than trying to pick it apart, rather than trying to figure out why I'm feeling what I'm feeling, really just trying to allow that feeling to take place, really mm. just allowing opportunity for my body to feel whatever it is that might be coming up for me, right? Without having to label it or attach it to something that's going on in my life. And I'm curious, go ahead. What were... <laughs> I am like loving what you're saying because, you know, as a therapist, sometimes I'll get clients in that are like, yep, this is what happened and this is why and this is where it came from and they can lay it out perfectly and on paper it's like cool then then why are you here why are you in therapy and really what gets missed a lot is that that feeling is you see it intellectually you conceptualize it you can articulate it but does that mean that we're skipping over the feelings part too or do you have awareness of what's coming up and how that lands and have have you made Space enough for it. And then, of course, the how, which is, I think, kind of what you're touching on a little bit is like, okay, there's a, a wide variety of emotions I feel. And then what do we do with that when we get to it? Yeah, I think that's been one of the biggest roadblocks. And we hear it a lot too from people is it's like, okay, I'm feeling this, but like, what's the point of feeling it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? What's the point of feeling sad? What's the point of feeling angry? If it's not going to fix anything, mm. mm -hmm. what would you say to that? Right. And what does fixing it look like? So the beauty of emotions is they really can give us insight into something. And emotions aren't bad. It's not a problem unless it's actually a problem. So just because you're angry, there's nothing wrong with feeling anger unless then, right, you're so angry, you can't fall asleep at night because you're ruminating and now you're running off three hours of sleep and now you're showing up to work and you're not able to focus and all of this stuff. Like it's not a problem unless it's actually a problem for, for you and, and maybe some of the people around you, right, how it's impacting the relationship. So that all being said, when we're able to sit with a feeling and just go, okay, thank you for sharing why I'm upset. Thank you for giving me this insight and information. I want to honor that I'm feeling that. And I want to, and you can go one of a couple ways. Sometimes it's like, yeah, let's sit with it a little bit. Let's make space for it. Let's, you know, if we're sad, let's cry or let's grieve and let's go through the motions because we often can't, we, we harbor energy. We hold it in. And when we push it aside, push it aside, it just kind of stays stuck. It somehow resurfaces. We get these like triggers and we're like, why am I mad again? Oh yeah, that's because of this that I didn't, you know, address or work on or process well enough and learn and grow and do all my self-healing and discovery. So when we're able to make space for it, we can really allow that energy to flow through us. So that way we can move forward. Now, I also say sometimes it's like, hey, man, I have been spending a lot of time on you lately <laughs> and I'm ready to move on. Like I can't keep doing this every three minutes of every day, get re-triggered and be mad. And then so we can also teach, you know, lots of stop, stop, uh, thought stopping and thought replacing techniques or we can create I sometimes will suggest like a a little time you carve out where okay at the end of the day you sit and you just do a big journal dump of everything bugging you and what's going on and um maybe you set a timer if you're someone who constantly ruminates set a timer do your dump and then that's it timer's off and you can pack it away until the next day and if something comes up you know take note but you're here to get back to work, right? So there's a lot of different ways to address it. It can be such an individual approach for like each person, right? What they're going through. There's some people who don't really feel the feelings. And so really getting in touch and starting from scratch of what was it like growing up with feelings? And was that something that was shut down a lot? Was that something that you were taught how to manage and navigate? This may very well be the first time some people have even gone to therapy, for example, and this is the first time they've really had a place to openly discuss and explore it. They may have just like put things on the back burner their whole life. So sometimes that's a great starting point too.
I'm checking in with that. I'm checking in with that. There's um, something that came up for me recently is like one of my go-tos is that avoiding emotions. And so it's been something that's I've had to work on and I constantly work on being able to sit with emotions and really feel it. And I gotta tell you, like, I'm proud of myself. I'm doing a really good job. And I had this moment of just Matt, I've had enough, right? I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm feeling the things. I'm processing. I'm sitting with it. Why is it still here? And in such a strong way that it was causing, you know, physical pain and the the way that it's manifesting in the body and just really feeling like at one point feeling like what I was feeling in that moment is like, it it is all for nothing. It is all for nothing because I'm doing the things and I'm still getting triggered by this person's actions who is not even in my life anymore. I only get it vicariously. I'm still feeling these physical effects. I'm still like, what, what am I doing it wrong? Is it better to just go back to my avoidant ways and, and not feel it because I'm feeling it. So it's, I, I know that that was just in the moment. I know that that was just in the moment and I can see all the healing that I've done and I can see all the healing I still have to do. But that didn't take away that that moment is really real. And I've heard people echo that back. You know, I'm tired of it. I've done it. And it's still bothering me. So what is, how how would you approach that one? You're so funny because I was so pissed yesterday. I <laughs> I had this like whole triggering moment. So long backstory, I don't have a relationship with my biological dad since I was little. Total like abandoned, like just don't know where he is anything like that haven't heard from him no clue girl I have been through it I have bawled my eyes out to sleep I have done like all the things the therapy journaling I have done the things I am 35 years old like this has been decades of me doing the work and I got triggered yesterday and was so mad and like mad because I was feeling sad like what could have been what would my life look like right and I got so mad because I was like, I am tired of feeling like this at the hands of someone else who's like not even around. Why am I still being like pulled into this emotional state when like, right, then there's all this resentment when he doesn't, you know, he's living it, but whatever. But exactly to your point of like, I've done it. Why are you, why are you back again? You know, how many times is this going to happen? I'm a little one personally, like, you know, my clients are like, oh, what should I do? Or how should I handle this? And I'm always like, do I pull out the Ashley or the therapist Ashley, right? Because I'm a little bit more like hard ass about these things. So my internal dialogue is a little bit rougher to push, push some of that stuff back. But what I will say is a lot of times changing the meaning, changing how we have assigned what has happened to us. And in, in, this is, again, this takes years and years, so this is not easy to say, but like really finding empowering meaning behind where you are in your life and what you've maybe overcome or um, how resilient or the beautiful life. Like I've been able to marry a wonderful husband who's amazing with our kids who would never repeat that same cycle at all. And just being able to kind of shift it and be like, what a bummer he's missed out on like a, a wonderful, beautiful human being, that person being me right? Totally not my fault. I have this wonderful life and it's just such a shame. He does not get to be a part of it. You know, sure. It's sad. Sure. It's a bummer. I honor that. I understand it, but I'm doing great. Right. And so, and for that one, that's that, but really shifting the meaning and association you've tied to what has happened. It doesn't take away the event, but it, it changes the way our brain kind of wires and responds because if we're feeling like, sure, we're like a victim or we have been harmed and we're feeling like we have no power, we have no control, starting to, sh that's every time you think about it, that's the feeling you're going to get. And it can be very overwhelming and scary. And then of course we behave a certain way. And so how can we change the meaning? And that's very can be yours to be right. We were meant to be.